For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. You're watching Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Bravi, and very glad to have again from Taipei City in Taiwan, um, Minister of Parliament of Taiwan Wang Tingyu is also a member and was the co-chair of uh, the Legislative Defense and Foreign Affairs National Committee. Mr. Wang, thank you so much for giving us time and appearing on Strat News again. And uh, belated Happy National Day, double tenth to you for yesterday. Thank you. It's our National Day holiday, and uh, it's my honor to see you again. And uh, hello to the friends in India. The pleasure is all ours, uh, Mr. Wang. I just wanted to get uh, straight into the National Day celebrations and the speech that uh, President Tsai Ing-wen made that uh, Taiwan will not bow to pressure from China and will defend its democratic way of life. Your comments on that? Yeah. Our president, Tsai Ing-wen, she made a very clear statement. First, Taiwan, we are, a, we are a peaceful country. We are not intent to invade or bully any country else. We are good neighbor to our neighboring countries. So even though you cannot use your military force to ask Taiwan sit on the negotiation table, we won't stand for that. Taiwanese people is is friendly and a peaceful race, but we won't surrender to unreasonable, unfair uh, military force. So our President Tsai sent a message to China. We can be good neighbors. We can be good friends, but there is no way to use him uh, military forcing Taiwanese people surrender on any condition. It, it doesn't work. Sure. Uh, soon after President Tsai's uh, speech, there was a reaction from China itself. I think the spokesperson of the State Council for Taiwan Affairs Office saying that China must be and will be unified. Taiwan's independence are uh, attempts will be smashed with joint efforts of compatriots across the state, referring to people inside Taiwan, not the DPP. Uh, your reaction to how China has uh, seen developments? Uh, first of all, my dear friend, look at Google. Taiwan has never been part of China for even one single second. Never. We never been part of them. So, the uh, use that term reunification is it, it, not a true, it's not a, a good term to describe the situation. China tried to uh, encourage in Taiwan, try to swallow Taiwan for their own national interest. It's invasion, it's not unification. Second of all, uh, our government made a very clear stand. We using our Taiwanese uh, majority agreements, Taiwan and uh, China, we don't belong to each other. We can be good friends, but we are not each other's uh, territory. Secondly, Taiwanese people uh, stand firmly to our constitution with freedom and democracy. No one can change that. The third is uh, in Taiwan, we don't want to bully the others. And in Taiwan, we using our vote to our district leader, to our president. Our democracy is our pride and it's the way how we live. No one can change that. The only one can change Taiwan's future is Taiwanese people. No one else. Our 23 million people is the, the only one has the right to vote to change our country future. So we hope using this uh, agreement to let the world and China understand uh, you, if you can respect that, 
if China can respect the existence of Taiwan, then maybe we can talk something out peacefully. And otherwise, into some conflict, it's, it doesn't do any good for both sides. True, uh, and even in the run-up to 10th uh, or double 10th day, we saw how there were a record number of uh, Chinese PLAAF uh, planes that had intruded into your ADIZ. This was also, of course, uh, the PRC's founding day on uh, 30th of uh, September. It was all seen as uh, signaling on that end. The latest that has come from Xi Jinping, uh, how do you see that? Because his earlier speeches were about crushing Taiwan. Do you see it as more conciliatory? Because he's talked about unification uh, being achieved peacefully, though, of course, like you're saying, Taiwan will not uh, agree uh, to that unless it's people who want it. Uh, Xi Jinping, he has his own agenda, but we don't have to follow his agenda, like India. You have borders uh, dispute with China, but you don't have to follow Chinese rule to stop that kind of uh, dispute. Uh, in Taiwan, we can look at the situation in two aspects. First, they send a lot of aircraft to invade, to harass our ADIZ. They have their own purpose. Uh, for maybe it's because of they want to create some kind of uh, de facto. They want to create some fact that they occupy our ADIZ, but we won't allow that. Secondly, they want to train their Air Force pilot to familiar with that area. That's their own purpose. But the major purpose, according to our intelligence uh, bureau, uh, Xi Jinping want to be want to have his third term as the Chinese leader. That's, uh, that break their own rule. Xi Jinping has changed their own constitution to allow him to uh, have third term for the next, e uh, next five years as general uh, secretary of Chinese Communist Party. So in that way, he need create some kind of need of China. So he is not only sending air force to harass Taiwan, he is sending their vessels to harass Miyoko Strait, very close to Japanese Okinawa. They send their army to your country, to India borders. So it's not only uh, uh, point Taiwan, it's about Xi Jinping's own a need to create some kind of need, need a super leader to stop all these uh, conflicts. So we need to be cautious because uh, PLA and the Chinese communists, they always using outside conflict to stop inside uh, conflict. So when they need outside conflict, they will choose somewhere uh, without caution, somewhere without real preparation, then they will start a limited conflict. They they don't they are not afford in limited conflict for now. So to Taiwan, we won't give them any excuse to uh, start a, a a hot or a heat uh, military conflict, and we will be well prepared prepared for any kind of uh, intrusion. So if we have been very cautious and uh, very well preparation, then the real conflict won't be happen or even the, the possibilities will be low. That's what we Taiwanese are doing now. But like many have pointed out, one of the reasons that there has been this record number of intrusions is also to uh, wear down the Taiwan's, say, pilots or, you know, ATC, people who have to constantly deal with this threat. You yourself, uh, Lelisera Wang, have pointed out in your in social media on, on your tweets that one effective way to discourage such activities would be to conduct joint 
intercepts. Do you see that uh, as realistic? Uh, who, who, apart from Taiwan, would be doing that? The US, Japan? Uh, something we, we are doing that ongoing, but it's not allowed to reveal in my uh, right. position. And secondly, you know, a, 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 a large a, a large amount of air fighters to raise our ADID. It's very irresponsible and uh, dangerous uh, move to take. If some miscalculation or some misunderstand, some misfired may cause the consequence we are not able to uh, to endure. So we we are keeping sending message to China first. Don't be an irresponsible, disresponsible neighbor, because China looks like a drunk muscle guy, and uh, hmm. always get a cigarette smoking near the gasoline station. It's very dangerous, dangerous and uh, irresponsible. Irresponsible. So we. Send in a message to China. Don't try to provoke a conflict. And we know Xi Jinping that he doesn't want a real conflict with Taiwan for now. But if some PA pilot, some uh, stupid soldiers pull the wrong triggers, may cause in some dangerous consequence that, that will influence the world, just like the Chinese army near India borders. If they send their soldiers, throw some rock, some stone, try to get inside of India borders. It's dangerous. They, that, that, that may cause in some terrible cons result from those uh, existential move. Secondly, uh, Taiwan play very important role in the world. As a democracy country, in the world, United States, India, Australia, Japan, the QUID, or the NATO, Europe, even Canada, they all they all want to protect the democracy against the dictatorship of China, and Taiwan is in the front line. We are facing this giant giant dictatorship China, and second. Our position is in the middle of the first island chain. If Taiwan can be secured, East China Sea, Taiwan Strait, South China Sea will be stabilized also. So the, our strategic position is very crucial and important. The reason Absolutely. is Taiwan play very important role in supply chain. Our IC chip. Our pre, our industrial uh, supply capability. We provide the global uh, economy very important uh, parts and our products. So these three reasons, I think, if China bully Taiwan or causing some terrible conflict in this region, it's not Taiwan issue. It's going to be global issue. It's going to be Indo-Pacific issue. So uh, not only United States, uh, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, I believe India too. We need to cooperate to stabilize the situation because we want peace. We want prosperity. We want to make this region uh, diversity and uh, peacefully. So uh, all the countries related to this region has a responsibility to cooperate with Taiwan to stabilize because it meets everybody's national interest. Absolutely, totally true. Just picking up from what you're saying, Mr. Wang, uh, both Taiwan as the first island chain, India in the um, Tibet border, you know, the north have been on the front line of facing China. 
But uh, I, do you think whether it's the Quad, whether it's the AUKUS, whether it's the United States uh, who has been issuing statements, whether it's Japan who, under the new government uh, of uh, Kishida also issuing statements, Taiwan essentially will have to protect itself. Or do you think uh, you'll have to fight your own battle? Is irrespective of the fact, like you're saying, it's everyone's problem, right? Yeah. Uh, first, to protect Taiwan is our own responsibility. We have 23 million people. It's our people. It's our friends, relatives, our lovings. So to protect our home, of course, it's our own responsibility. We increase our national defense budget. We invent a lot of new good missiles to protect our own country. Uh, but Taiwan issue is not only Taiwan issue. Everybody knows that. So yeah. what I say, we have to protect our own self. But if the friends can do something to help, we will be uh, we will show our appreciation. For example, in QUAD, we would like to appreciate your country, India. In QUAD in Quad, you are sending very clear message to China. Don't do something to do it. If you do something across the red line, it's not, it will influence the regional the people will allow that. And uh, what you say about the state state code, uh, state code is our uh, national strategy for now. The status st quo to Taiwan is first to protect Taiwanese people as democracy and has right to choose our to determ determine our own future. Second, about the status of coal is to protect to keep the peace and the stability across the strait. So that's the status quo. Uh, to Taiwan and the United States and the rest of the world, they all recognize this status quo cannot be changed in one single side. So Taiwan, right. our government has made very clear statement. We will do everything to stop China try to change the status quo using military way to bully Taiwan, mm. to force Taiwan sit on the negotiation table. It, we won't allow that to happen. We will do our best to protect our country. And uh, the rest of the world, especially in uh, in the Pacific and the region, you have to look very carefully because China's ambition is not only about Taiwan. It, once yeah. China occupied Taiwan, they will penetrate the first island chain. The West Pacific will be there from Yasa. Their submarine will go towards uh, Hawaii, go to Atlantic Ocean. And uh, just like they send their army to your, uh, to your territory, it's not only India issue, it's a regional security issue. We, democracy country, need to uh, hand in hand cooperation to stop this kind of ambitious, provocative uh, military action from China. If we tolerate that, they will step forward and forward. One day, the conflict sooner or later will come. But if we stop them, sending clear message to them, they will think about that twice, even three times, mm. to do that kind of ambitious, aggressive move. Then we can keep dynamic uh, stability. So that's our responsibility. Uh, the, the term our means we are democracy country, our allies. Mm. And uh, part of that has been signaling, has been uh, high level visits whether it's of uh, French senators or the former Australian prime minister and strong words against China. There have been also contact of uh, senators and legislators uh, of, of Japan and Taiwan as well. 
all of this is sending a message but do you think it's enough and how do you think india should be progressing in its ties with taiwan it's not just because it's anti china india and taiwan have to gain a lot just by developing their ties right yeah i love your words not only for anti anti china we yeah. we are we are not anti china i i want china can have their own good life can have their own prosperity uh, prosperity we we don't hate china we just want to protect our homeland so uh in our national day we we appreciate uh the french uh their parliament delegation come to taiwan and uh, former former uh, prime minister from australia we yeah. we can feel that kind of support from international society even the Lithuania uh, delegation come to taiwan try to organize their uh, office in taipei so uh mm -hmm. taiwan and the india if you look at the map it looks far but we are very close like what I said last time, India and the Taiwan, we can be perfect complementary countries because in uh, in IT industrial, we can have uh, offset each other's uh, uh, industrial line. Uh, in strategic, uh, we Taiwan in the east side, India in the west side. If we can have more relationship with each other, to do very good partnership to help each other's security. So uh, now in Taiwan, there are a lot of India friends, students in Taiwan. In my in my home city, Tainan City, south part of Taiwan, I can see India students in our university everywhere. So. In Taiwan, we think India is our best friend, especially recently, we got a very warm encouragement from your country. So in economy, in security, even in cultural, we can have so many uh, engagement with each other. We are close, we are not far. So the, yes. the true meaning for a government to uh, if this is to serve our people, to enhance our people's benefit, to increase our economic performance, to make our country more secured and more safe. So if we believe this, India government and Taiwanese government, we can have very good cooperation in this uh, aspect. Well, one aspect of cooperation that has been reported is a multi-billion dollar semiconductor investment, say, in India from your big companies. You are talking about self-reliance. You are talking about supply chain resilience. Uh, would you have any further information on how that is progressing? Yeah. Uh, Taiwan government has organized, uh, has planned to organize a delegation to visit India, uh, try to enhance our in, uh, in economy cooperation. Uh, even in our parliament, we would like to visit your country after COVID can be controlled. Because it's not politics, it's about econ economy. Uh, in Taiwan, we think India is uh, only two country population uh, beyond uh, beyond 100, uh, 1,000 million. So it's, it's a big country. China and uh, India, you have very large population. That means you, are, uh, you have plenty okay. of laborers can, can provide industrial need. Secondly, India, your IT capability is very very excellent in the world we if we need some white color uh technology uh step india will be our top option and besides that india government is a government with a 
low and the democracy. That means predictable. That means India, uh, the, the environment of investment can be much more stable than China. So uh, in Taiwan, it, to invest in India is a hot issue in our uh, co uh, business circles. So I believe for the coming several years, uh, if we mention about investment, India will come to our top three list in Taiwan investors. So uh, maybe we will, we will see each other soon in the future, in the coming right. future. I, I would certainly hope so. Uh, talking about economics and trade, Mr. Wang, uh, what is the current position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the CPTPP? Now, uh, Taiwan has said it wants to join. China has said it wants to join. And China obviously doesn't want Taiwan on board there. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, to participate in CPTPP is a high standard uh, free trade organization. We need to adjust our inside regulation and our uh, quality. Then we can apply for participate in CPTPP. Taiwan, we have spent more than six years to uh, fix our regulation and uh, some laws related to free trade and the CPTPP. And we have, we have. Uh, achieve that already then uh, we enhance our uh, uh, freedom our liberty in cyber usage so as a, as a government of Taiwan we think Taiwan has well preparation to participate in CPTPP and this we got good response from Australia Canada, and uh, some mm. other countries. I don't think it's competition between Taiwan and China. China has their own problem. They need to adjust their country's uh, natures, then can apply CPTPP. Even they send their application now, but uh, if you look at Chinese economy situation, they are asking private uh, capitals leave and the move national capital yeah. in try to control their uh, major business hundreds of companies become state-owned company it's quite against the basic discipline of cptpp and uh, the freedom of uh internet the respect the law protection to patent and uh, some intelligence uh, proper, uh, property. That kind of yep. adjustment is kind of challenging to China. It's not about Taiwan. It's about their own problem. So to participate in CPTPP, Taiwan has been do a lot of job to apply that. I believe uh, it's optimistic. We can melt in this regional big uh, economy free trade organization. And uh, I hope China can adjust their own uh, policy and uh, their rules, regulations. Then everybody can participate in and respect and follow international norms. That's the most important. So if China, they try to participate so many international organizations and they don't respect any regulation of international society, maybe the world can agree to think about twice. It's, it's participation or sabotage. Good point. Uh, let's say uh, one thing you and thank you again for your time, uh, bladed. Happy National Day as well, and thank you for this comprehensive chat again on Strat News Global. Thank you, and I hope to see you in India too. <laughs> Absolutely, all in Taiwan very soon. Thank you again. Just a reminder to our viewers, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that.
follow our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for the latest news and analysis from an Indian perspective. This is Strat News Global. I'm Amit Abrini.